Hello everybody, I am Ardhendu De. You are watching Edis English Literature. Ever since my first reading of Shakespearean Soren number 97, how like a winter hath my absence been? The puzzling time still haunts me, and the absence of a friend that caused Shakespeare's mind so absorbed in those puzzling time is at once poetically attractive and gives ample intention of debate among students. So in today's discussion, we are heading straight into Shakespeare's sonnet number 97 and try to locate the time differences, the beautiful metaphors, the images that had been used and the confusing time references throughout the sonnet in whole of the sonnet quatrains. But before we analyze Shakespeare's sonnet number 97, let's look at a glimpse of his sonnets first. Shakespeare's sonnets were written and revised between 1598 to 1609. They were first printed in 1609 in a quarto volume. A contemporary Francis Mears praised Shakespeare as a mellifluous and honey-tongued poet, equal to Roman Ovid. Praising in particular his sugar-rated sonnets, that particular phrase he uses, uh, that was circulating in private circles in private friends. There were um, 154 odd sonnets and four characters are there. Uh, obviously the poet himself and the sonnets were addressed uh, most of the sonnet 126 sonnets odds were addressed to his fair friend WH. The beauty and virtue he praises throughout his sonnet sequences. And a few of the sonnets were addressed to a mysterious, faithless, dark lady. Particularly 130 it describes. And there is sometimes a rival character, a competitor poet of the poet. Critics debate over the design of the poetry. Is it Shakespeare's inner voice or is it a miniature drama in poetry? Many of the critics think that by these sonnets Shakespeare unlocks his heart because very little information regarding the person Shakespeare is available to us. But many of the critics reputed this kind of uh, charges them said that uh, sonnets are miniature drama. Uh, if he unlocks his heart, he is less a Shakespeare than Argus. So all sort of arguments and all sort of uh, understanding regarding Shakespeare and sonnets you can pop up in my other Shakespeare and series lectures where you can find out that answer. And you can also search my blog www.ordhendude.blogspot.com for further reading. Now coming to the poem, I will tell you in simple words the three quatrain and a couple of design of this kind of sonnet uh, and I will try to explain in simple meaning what it tells about. Then I will venture into the complexity of the poem and how it has been designed to make time references and why the time references is confusing or kind of kind of interesting one in this particular sonnet. But before that we will just read the sonnet in its truest, simplest paraphrase meaning. The sonnet has been designed into three quatrain and a couplet. The first quatrain it tells and uh, the speaker poet has been compelled to go through a separation from his beloved friend WH. And this particular sonnet and this part, uh, the first four lines, he compares this kind of absence from his, his friend like that of a winter. He makes a comparison. He portrays simply the image of winter. By that image of winter, he parallels his present state of mind or present state of affairs. He is being detached from his friend. How like a winter hath my absence been from thee, the pleasure of the flitting year? What fridgings have I left? What dark days seen? What old December's barrenness everywhere. Simply the poet speaker tells us that his separation from WH has left 
or just felt in him like that a pointer since you are fair friend you are what makes the year pleasurable for absence from me has been like the season of winter in which the delight of the year vanished away so i am feeling chill i am frozen as usually one experiences in the time of winter the days are seeming dark everywhere there is barrenness as like that of winter the barrenness of december is investing him everywhere whether he is in desolation in isolation in separation and that's desolate isolate and separated state of his mind has been compared to that of winter seasons and that winter is only because the absence of his fair friend because with the absence of fair friend whatever the warmth he had within him has been stolen he was left alone because the very warmth was his fair friend so absence of fair friend is like that of chilling december in the second quarter the poet speaker again says but here he comes into reality he says the season that he was referring was instead last summer or the early autumn when all the nature is bearing the fruits of summer's blooming so the first quantos that he conditions himself like that of winter is not real winter but it might be late summer or early autumn let's concentrate what he says and yet this time removed was summer's time the teeming autumn big with rich increase bearing the wanton burden of the prime like widowed homes after their lords disease the speaker narrator of sonnet number 97 is stating his state of mind after partial detachment from his fair friend or a kind of a short drift separation from his fair friend in the first quarter he compares himself in the state of mind of the winter but he corrects that time differences in second quarter and that it is not actually the winter it is in fact winter like it might be late in summer season or early in autumnal seasons and he explains his that time differences in second quarter what he says the time the poet and the his fair friend has been apart has been separated for any of the reason was actually summer then the fall the harvest time or the autumn and we all know how the autumn is reacting to nature rich with crops fruits that was planted in spring like that of womb of a woman who has conceived a child in the spring time by her husband but later the spring dies and when the child is being given birth in the time of autumn the child become orphan so here the imagery and metaphor is extended and explaining the time difference that it might be a close to autumnal season now i am coming to explain all the time differences in separate way but first what the third part says let concentrate he in the third quarter dismisses that wanton burden of the prime that is uh, the bounty of the summer that we always uh, listen is really not existent here unreal it is like that of hope of orphan it could not have been fathered by summer because summer and his pleasure is all waited for his fair friend his beloved friend as when he is gone the fertility is gone and even birds have lost their voices they are silent so the third quarter it says 
Yet these abandoned issues seem to me but hope of orphans and unfathered fruits. For summer and his pleasure wait on thee. And thou away the very birds are mute. Now here is the complexity. Try to understand or decipher the meaning. The abundant fruits of nature that are looking to me as if orphaned, unfathered, hopeless. Why so? Because summer and summer's pleasures are everywhere dependent on the you. You are gone, summer gone. So the fruits or the fruition of the nature is never possible. Even birds have lost their voices. They are silent because they are waiting for you. So everything creative, everything fruitful, everything sonorous is waiting for you because you are the emblem of every creative impulse. So the time confusing, the poet's state of mind is quite clear that even though I imagining myself like that of that of that seasons which is full of these and that and those only but alive and creative one whatever the in reality the season is the real mirth of season is never possible unless you come to me your detachment is actually a winter in me even though it is in actuality summer even though it in actuality it is autumn even though it is in actuality be a sp spring or something so but in me your absence is winter whatever the season i have in my mind it is all controlled by you even though i am living in atom your absence make it winter even though i am living in summer your absence will make it winter because you are alive because you are light because you are fusion because you are sonorous your absence is absolute alternation or altercation of my state of seasons as well as external seasons of nature. In the couplet part, the speaker emphatically designs that entirety of his explanation. First quadrant, second quadrant as well as continued the imagery in third quadrant. Here nothing extra has to be told but it simply states that birds, even though are forced to sing, they are unmatching. They are not sonorous. A matching sound of birds with music is only possible with your presence. Even the leaves are coming out, the leaves are not giving such a allied force of green. They are pale in color. So it states, or if they sing, it's with so dull a cheer that lips look pale, dreading the winters near. So even though the birds do sing, seeing that there is winter in front of him as there is no fair friend. Even though birds sing within poet's mind, he, he finds that there is no fair friend in poets nearby then he will stop sonorous music. It will be a drab cry. The leaves that are green and full of life should turn pale if he finds out that WH or his fair friend is nowhere in poet's mind. If the birds sing, they sing so sadly that the leaves look pale on account of their fear that winter is approaching to destroy them. So presence of fair friend is like that of fair season and absence of it turning it into total wintry, chill, frozen, desolate and full of destructions. Now coming through and making a reading of this poem in total paraphrase type of reading and getting into meaning, we find one thread confusing, that is the time references. 
So summer, we all know, is not Atta. Yet Shakespeare seems to link the two together as if they are the same. But why? Maybe here we do have to guess something. But we have some guidance. Just look at the word and yet. And yet suggests that although the absence has been like a winter, in reality it has been a different season. A much more positive season. As teeming, bug, rich suggest. Lots of life. Which is full opposed to the bleak winter. So let's think of the real season as summer, late summer or summer setting into autumn. The grain is ripening, palm fruits drop from the boughs of the trees, but a sudden dark note is struck. All this fruit and grain, like little children, suddenly become, through a metaphor, it's told, the wanton. Like there are wanton sexual activity, it seems. Then look at the another simile. Building on this particular image, all these offspring come from the widowed mom of Atta. But now our husband, the spring, is no more, is dead. She is left a widow. This is very sad. So the imagery is very complicated but straightforward also. It complicates the time frame but beautifully designs. It tells simply that even though you will find such and such and such things which are so attractive in nature with life, with fruits and with ripening, all these things are like that of a detached and unwanted things, unwelcome things, as like that of a mother unwelcoming the very son whose very son whose father is dead. So similarly, whatever joy, whatever mirth, whatever fruits and fullness that I have within me, if it comes out at the time you are in absent, they will remain like that of a orphan they will not find its true father that is you because you are being absent even though my creation is there it will not find the father which is the very origin of my creation that is you my fair friend the absent now see uh, what shakespeare has done it is very characteristic he starts with a straightforward comparison my absence was like winter. Then he tells us that it was really summer fall. Then, this is the typical Shakespearean touch, of course. He uses some more images to show you that how this teeming, rich, abandoned harvest time strikes him. Yes, lots of life, but pathetic life. Orphans of the widow. And we now have a new way to think about the seasons. Spring is gone, gone, leaving only the traces that is engendered. And thou away, the very birds are mute. Here he continues tracking the implications of his previous competition. Yet, in uh, line 9, one second indicates a contrast between the way things are and the way things seem. But here the contrast is a little misleading. He is already struck the dark note with the widow dome and the dead husband. But seemed emphasizing or he emphasizes uh, by the very word seemed. The seeming of all this. Not in reality but in Dream. Should Shakespeare find this abandoned issue such a source of gloom? Because thou, the very word, you. Because you were away and without you summer gives no pleasure. And even the birds don't sing. So your absence make my creation 
orphan because you are the very father of my creativity you are the very origin of my creativity you must know that this is hyperbola this is much exaggeration we cannot literally the idea that an individual's absence causes so much so that the external nature changes such and such or the internal nature changes such and such even birds can mute but this is all poetic it is just seems the way to the speaker without you there is no joy in the world we commonly say so but the poet here exaggerates that point of view and makes it a point that even though in front of me there are so many seasons are gone even though i find so many of these seasons in front of me even though they are fruitful they are appealing but they are not appealing to me personal because you are aware. some intense level or the emotional attachment is there always as scholars or the critics who have read this poem who have argued this poem generally agreed that the sonnets of shakespeare uh, which are addressed to fair friend or fair youth uh, absence or presence has been exaggeratedly uh, pointed out or exaggeration to the extent of homosexuality okay. shakespeare deals poetically here but we like readers are always free to apply shakespeare's sonnets uh, to any generalized love affairs in expressing the misery uh, of absence when we are in separation so shakespeare state of mind or shakespeare's external as well as internal conditions or conditioning by the very presence of or the very absence of fair friend is to be the very condition of every earthly lovers that come through into this world in the affairs of love this is purely shakespearean sonnet uh, three quarter and one couplet you, you will notice that each four line verse unit is also marked up as a unit of meaning and in this particular sonnet the every second and third quarter begins and yet and yet uh, this is a, like that of a continued structure from first quarter to second quarter into third quarter but a sonnet needs 14 lines so the next two lines in the couplet line is being added but i must say here that the last two lines um, is nothing so appealing or nothing new is said there thematically it is disjointed from shakespearean likes but uh, poetically it is joined somehow uh, only because of the poem to be entertained with 14 lines we have couplet here otherwise nothing new is said in the couplet line usually in shakespeare's couplet uh, carry the whole weightage of the entire sonnet but here whatever is being stated in the first second and third quarter is enough to make a beautiful poem so much for the meaning of the words so much for the meaning of the words that we are reading shakespeare's slides now words carry sounds and sounds carry musicality and that music haunts us towards that poem the subtle use of alliteration uh, that we find in old english is also being repeated here bridging failed dark ages widow domes and further truths so here shakespeare's design is like that of a interview long vowel sounds uh, for example you can you can find many a e double e sounds similar vowel sounds which which is rhetorically called assonances also here shakespeare likes to use similarities of sound to hint at connection of senses note how bareness the very word that has been used might just bring to mind barrenness what is the meaning of the barrenness inability to have children and is picked up by its seeming opposite bearing having child and notice how those three in a row trace syllables in the last line lives look pale 
seem to live alone. All this operates more and less beneath our conscience to help produce the emotional effect of the poetry. So sounds is also important in this particular poem. I think many things has been missed in this short discussion. But what I have tried to explain you that sonnet number 97 is such a beautiful sonnet which exhibits in three quarters and a complete pattern the very design of season both external and internal and the confusing aspects of winter late summer as well as early autumn and the poet's absence from his fair friend all these things as well as musicality of this poem appeal us and in a unit you have to read all these references to get a complete meaning of this sonnet so if you find this lecture fruitful you can just pop up here and make a comment and if you have any queries just ask me i will try my best to give some answers like share comment and obviously subscribe to my channel to stay tuned in this kind of posts or the like bye bye